Well, hello and welcome to another episode of The Bible Says This. What say you? Psalms 33 verse 4. The A clause says, for the word of the Lord is right. I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, sitting in the sanctuary. And I have I have some awesome, I have awesome guests with me today. I have my first assistant. My first assistant, the elder John Amanchuku, an awesome man of God with a tremendous uh, mind, an intelligent preacher who can preach, pray, and sing. And just for full disclosure, he happens to be my son-in-law. God's using him mightily. He's a Thank fantastic you, dad, a fantastic husband. I often say to people, everybody should have a son-in-law like mine. He's married to my beloved Crystal, and you know how I feel about Crystal. That's right. And this man uh, is doing a super job preacher thank you for being a part today bishop thank you for allowing me on the set today yes sir i'm so excited about this session that we're going to do we have some <laughs> great things in store for this segment now i tell you what we're going to start with we're going to start with this i was watching a piece on television that cnn covered and 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 the uh the 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 the, the, the talking heads on cnn right they thought that what was happening to the president was strange hmm. because guess what he was being prayed for. Mm -hmm. He was receiving prayer and he was doing something that all churchgoers right. are familiar with. They laid hands on the president and prayed for him. That's right. Now, the CNN talking heads said it was weird and strange. I guess the CNN people don't go to church. Or maybe, maybe, maybe they don't <laughs> attend a holiness service right. or a Pentecostal service or right. an evangelical service. And, uh, and or maybe they were just being hypocrites uh, and, and doing another fake news uh, piece because there's nothing unusual, strange or weird about ministers laying hands on someone and right. praying for them. Right. Now, watch this little clip and, and we're going we're going to join you. And next, a, a pretty stunning image. Let me just give you a quick peek of it. The president bowing his head in prayer in the Oval Office and, and all these people sort of touching him. Uh, it's, it's very strange. We're going to tell you what happened there. All right. So we, we, we're going to talk about this. Uh, they, they think it's weird. Uh, personally, mm -hmm. I think that it is a wonderful thing that whether you voted for President Trump or not, whether he's your cup of tea, of tea or you think he's the worst thing ever, that he would allow right. men of God and women of God to pray for him in the Oval Office and allow it to be recorded, allow the picture, which means he's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, whether you like him, whether you agree with him or agree with his policies, I think that it is a good thing for him to receive prayer. I, I agree, Bishop. You know, uh, Paul tells Timothy to not to forsake the laying of the hands of the presbytery. <laughs> and, you know, I guess Donald Trump is supposed to be a presbyterian. Uh -huh. So I guess it's right to lay hands on a presbyterian. Yes. <laughs> not to forsake the, the, the act of the presbytery, that is the clergy. That's right. The, the, the men of God do not forsake them praying, That's right. laying hands mm -hmm. on people because that is a transference of power. Yes, it is. And the act of praying for right. a president is not an act of saying, I agree with all of his policies. Correct. Yeah, that's not our way of saying we endorse everything that, that you're doing. Right. But it is our way of saying we agree with and we endorse the God of the Bible. Right. And we want his presence and his anointing and we want him to influence right. This man, just as the God of the Bible influenced King Artaxerxes, he influenced uh, King uh, Cyrus, he influenced King Darius, he influenced King Nebuchadnezzar, he influenced Pharaoh. All the none of these men were Christians. Right, Attila the Hun. Yes. Adolf Hitler. Yes. There have been countless men who didn't have the right spiritual condition. Right. But we should still pray for them. The Bible says in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, mm -hmm. verse 1, it reads, yes, sir. I exhort, therefore, that first of all. First of all. Supplications. All right. That's one form of prayer. Right. That's a specific form of prayer. Right. Uh -huh. Prayers. That's prayers in general. Right. 
and then intercessions. <laughs> that someone praying on your behalf, Preach, interceding for you. Yes, sir. Stepping in the gap in between the delta between your soul and God. Yes, sir. Getting in there and praying for you. Three forms of prayer. And watch this. And giving of thanks. Yes. Hallelujah. CNN has never read that, but go ahead. By all means, be made for all, watch this, men. Whoa. All men. All men. All men. Well, does that not include President Trump? It does. Just like it included Barack Obama. Right. President Clinton. Right. And so on and so forth for all men. It even includes Bruce Jenner. That's right. All men. Bruce, Bruce Jenner. All, <laughs> all men. And it says then for kings. Yes. And for all that are in authority. And even though President Donald Trump is not a king. Right. He is an authority. He is an authority. He is the most powerful political figure in the world. That's right. He's the leader of the most powerful nation in the world. Right. Now, it said we should pray for who? F for kings. Right. And for all that are in authority. Yes. And then here, here's the benefit. Here's the blessing for going to mm -hmm. the over office, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and praying for him. Right. That we may lead a quiet Woo. and peaceable life. Why? In all yeah. godliness and honesty. So it benefits us then to pray for those who are in authority. That's right. And then it reads, uh, for this is good. Yes. Listen to Paul. What? And acceptable in the sight of God. It, in, in other words, it says God approves. God approves of praying for all men, especially political figures in positions right. of power right. because if the truth be told they can affect our lives correct they they have the power to determine whether we live together uh, in godliness and, and 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 in peacefulness and and whether we prosper because they can change one stroke of the pen mm -hmm. and policies are changed That's right. uh, nations go into war correct uh, 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 depressions uh, can be brought on, recessions can be brought mm -hmm. on, as well as they can put a policy in place that causes the economy to just take off. That's Am right. I right? You're right. So what's strange about praying for them? Nothing strange. And then Paul gives us the benefit in addition to that. He says, who will have all men to be saved. Glory to God. Glory to God. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. For there is one God. One God. And one mediator between God and men. Mm -hmm. And men, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. Yes. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and, ver and verity. I would therefore that men pray. Watch this everywhere. Everywhere. Every location. That includes the over the office. The over office. Right. The right. earth is the Lord's right. and the fullness there thereof. Right. Everywhere. Amen. In every location. Uh, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Praise it's it's right to pray for president. And whether the president is a Democrat or right. a Republican, presidents need prayer. Now, they, they laid hands on him, and, mm -hmm. and we're morphing now. Right. It, because now we know that it's theological. Correct. To pray for kings mm -hmm. and all who are in authority. Yes, sir. If we didn't know before, we know now because you just read it. Correct. All right. Now, and yet there is a minister out there who called the act of praying for the president borderline theological malpractice. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I've never heard, back to CNN for a moment, I never heard the CNN people call Bruce Jenner weird. Right. <laughs> the man thinks he's a woman. Correct. I've never heard the CNN people call same-sex married couples weird, disturbing. Never. Well, I mean, what could be more disturbing and what could be more weird mm -hmm. than that? And so uh, you just read the Bible. Mm -hmm. When the Bible says we ought to pray, and yet there is a man who called the act of praying for our president borderline uh, theolo it says calls it a form of theological male theological male practice 
that borders on heresy. Now, the word heresy, a heresy is any doctrine that is contrary to the established doctrine of the faith. Correct. Now, it is established in scripture that we pray for kings. It is. <laughs> that we pray for leaders. Right. And this is Bible, right? Yeah, yeah. So then there's nothing uh, heretical. There's no heresies involved in praying for uh, a political figure. Right. I remember that I, when, when they begin to make all these movies about, you know, White House down and this mm -hmm. and that, movies where the president gets shot, the president right. gets, gets attacked. Right. I said from the pulpit that this is during the last you eight said it. years. You said it. That I'm disturbed that the, the, the moment we get a president of color, all of a sudden here are these movies, these Hollywood flicks right. of the man getting shot right. or getting killed. That's right. That disturbed me, even though I disagree with most of his policies, uh -huh. and everybody knows that. I said from the pulpit, though, I do not want any harm to come to him, his wife, his children. Right. In fact, here at the upper room, we prayed for the president. We did. We prayed that God would keep him safe. Mm -hmm. We prayed that the Lord would watch over him. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never been uh, invited to the White House. I don't know if he's ever allowed preachers to lay hands on him or not. Perhaps he has, perhaps he hasn't. But I know I uh, never had that privilege, and had I been given that privilege, I most certainly would have considered it a privilege and an honor. By all means. And I would have prayed for our president. President. And just for the record, I would have prayed that God protect him, that right. God keep him, that God right. watch over him. I right. would also pray. Uh, I, I also prayed in privacy, in, in, in private prayers, that God would turn his heart. Right. That, that, you know, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Right. That God would turn his mind away from his uh, commitment to Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. I'm right. not lying about right. that. I prayed right. about that. That's right. I prayed about, I was disturbed by his seeming just love affair with all things LBGTQ. Mm -hmm. We never had a president to give a shout out uh, to homosexuals from the White House. We right. never had the White House decked out right. in homosexual colors before. Never. In the rainbow colors reflecting not the God of the Bible, the God who made the rainbow, but the, the homosexual movement. We've never had that. We've never had that before. And and the the rhetoric of Reverend Barber is, is fallacious. Okay. You know, yeah. the, the ideals and principles that he's put forth. It's just inaccurate. Uh -huh. You know, uh, the, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 13, uh, verse 1, it says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Right. right. For there is no power but of God. Okay. The powers that be are ordained of, of God. Right. Means that God set it in motion. Right. He gave us presidents. Mm -hmm. He gave us the House and the Senate. Right. He gave us the judiciary branch. God did this. And verse 2 says, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, who fights against it, who shuns it, resisteth the ordinance of God. Mm -hmm. And they resist, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now, we're running out of time, and we're, we're most certainly not saying that he doesn't have the right to peaceful assembly right because he does mm -hmm. he doesn't have the right he he has the right of freedom of speech correct okay all of those things we have no problem with but the 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 anarchist behavior of mm -hmm. many the mm -hmm. the the um the attack on property, right? Uh, the the movement of these people who are all in the streets and and blocking the roads. Right. Now that is not peaceful assembly. It's not. That it's is not. not constitutionally protected behavior. Right. Now you outed him. I hadn't called his name yet. I hadn't called his name <laughs> yet because listen, as we close this, you're going to see on screen a, a picture of the Reverend Barber uh, decked out in his bishop's official attire in his garb, his clerical, ecclesiastical garb, with the LGBT colors behind him. Mm. Now, I'm going to come back, John and I, in the next segment and read what he, he says, and we're going to address it. Now, I'll be honest with you. I started to read it, and then for the next 10 or 15 minutes, feel the, 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 the broadcast with just laughter. We're just <laughs> laughing because it's laughable. Right. But, but since he has such an audience, we've got to deal with it for the serious matter that it is because to call, to single out a group of ministers 
who didn't go and say I endorse every program that right. uh, President Trump has. Uh, uh, but they simply said, we're going to pray for him. Mm. And they talked with him and they celebrated the fact that he listened right. to them That's right. to call that uh, theological malpractice. There's something wrong with that. Now, my friends, we'll join you in just a moment for more of the Bible says this. What say you?